Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a clean, reusable animation handler in Roblox Studio. This will let you manage and play animations properly without repeating code in every single script. It's modular, easy to set up, and is a massive upgrade from just loading animations manually everywhere. So what actually is an animation handler? Well, it's a system that centralizes how animations are loaded, played, stopped, and managed overall. Instead of writing new animation logic in every script, for example, for combat, for emotes, for NPCs, you would just call one function with the animation ID and it will solve all the, all the common issues like animations are not stopping correctly, repeating load code and animations overlapping. And once it's set up, you can just throw it into any game and it will work with any system in that game. Before I set up the handler, we're going to make a quick animation so you can actually test it out yourself. So first thing, go to avatar at the top here, then press on rig builder, pick R6 or R15, I'm just going to do R6 for this, and you add in a block avatar. And if you want to change what your game actually is, you go to home, game settings, and then down here in uh, avatar, you can switch if you want your game to be R6 or R15. So I'm going to switch it to R6 because I'm doing animations with an R6 rig. Now you have the rig in here, all you want to do is go back to avatar at the top, click animation editor, and now you will have this down here where you can animate anything you'd like. So click on the rig now, and down here you press this plus icon and add all to body, or add all body, I don't remember what it said, and now you can animate. So over here you have the different tools and stuff, so move and let me put that back okay. okay yeah remove the keyframe so you press this and you can move it and if you press r you can change it to rotate and you do also want to change these to zero so that it actually moves uh, smoothly like this and it doesn't move in increments if you want it to move in increments then you can change it up here so it moves in increments but we're going to turn this off so it moves smoothly. You can just press these boxes here if you want them to rotate in increments on or move. So we will just quickly create a simple uh, raising the hand animation. We'll do that. So one other thing, go in here, set animation priority, and we will change this to action. I'm not going to fully explain animations because this is more of a tutorial on the script side but you can go search up a video for how to make good looking animations. So at frame zero, we're just going to leave it as, as it is. Then we will go to, let's say here, and we will just raise the arm. So now the arm goes up and we can make the arm go back down. So this is our animation, goes up and then back down. And if you press the space bar, it will play. So. This is just so you can actually see the animation playing and I'll show it when I show you how to use the script, the, the module. So this is my animation. Now you press these three dots here and you press publish to Roblox. You give it a name. So that's the animation. And here you can change it if you want this to be uploaded to a group. I'm going to leave it as just me. And you press the save button and then boom. Here, you just press this button here and it will copy the ID. This is what we're going to use to actually play the animation. Now, just write this down somewhere. So I'm just gonna quickly make a blank script here with the animation ID so I can put it in later and just disable the script so it won't have any errors. And yeah, that's how you make an animation. Now let's actually go over the script side of things. So in Replicate Storage, you want to add a new module script. I've already created one right here. So just rename your module script to Animation Handler, like I've done here. So let me just delete this one. Do that. And now let me go over some things. So let me just close these out so I can explain everything. So first things first, take these from the top here. The debris and then players. 
debris is just so you can add something for a set duration of time and it destroys and deletes properly after the time has passed. Players is to get the players. And this here is a table to store all the animations that a player has or a character. This works for NPCs as well. So first function, we'll take this animator one. And this one is not a module function. It is just a normal function that we are using inside of these other functions. And this is to find the animator inside of the certain or like the specific character. So we get the humanoid from the character because that's where the animator is supposed to be inside of. If there's not a humanoid, then it will return and pretty much. And the animator is what you use to actually play animations. So that's why we need to get it. So here we do a check, find, well, we get the animator here. Humanoid find for shard class animator. And if it's not there, then we will just create a new animator using instance.new animator. And we put it inside of the humanoid. So we can close out this one. And then we get the load anim function. This function will load an animation. So I will go through all of this briefly because it's quite a lot. So here we have the parameters. So you have the character, the type, animation ID, and a keyframe callback. This is for specific situations where you have like an event inside of the animation. If you don't know what that means, then don't worry about that. You can ignore this. You don't have to have one of these. So just don't worry about that. And the animation ID is what I mentioned earlier, the animation's actual ID so you can play it. Let me explain this. So these are just some checks. If these aren't here, then return end. Then here we get the animator. So we do get animator, which is our function here, and we put in the character. So now here we will get the animator because it returns the animator back. So now this variable is equal to the character's animator. If not animator, then return end another check. And here we get a new animation. So we create a new animation and we give it the animation ID that we put in. And then we create a animation track for that. So the track is the animator load animation animation. That's how you load an animation into the player. You do animator load animation. And then the animations instance. So here we actually add it to the table. So module the animations character, whoops, uh, will be equal to the module animation character or blank table. So these are just if the table is blank or if there's anything else in there. This doesn't actually set it yet. This is down here. So do that for both. And connections is, I will get back to that, but for now it's an empty table. I'll explain it when I come down here. This is for the animation tracks. So if keyframe callback, I'm not actually going to really go through this, but it's basically inside of animations, you can have a keyframe event, like a, when a certain keyframe is reached and you can have an event for that. So when it reaches that keyframe, you can fire specific code. You'll have to look at a different video for actually how to set up that in animations and stuff, because I'm not covering it here. So we will just insert a bunch of stuff in here inside of this table. Uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into it because this video is gonna get very long. And that's only if there's a keyframe callback. If there's not, then it will do it without the keyframe callback. So connections, uh, track or stopped. So in here, we're just adding the animation tracks. So here we check if the tracks stopped, and then it will uh, connect uh, fire function. So connect function, and then it will remove the animation with these parameters here. So for which character, for what type of animation, and the animations ID. Here we add the animations to the table. This only fires when the animation track is finished. So if it hasn't finished, then here we add it. So we do module.animations, which is up here, that table. For the character, uh, then whatever the type of the animation, then the animation's ID, and it will be equal to a track. So this is the animation's track, and that will be equal to the track that we created here for this specific animation. And the connections is, the animation is track so like table, which has all this other stuff in it. It's quite confusing. Uh, you don't really have to understand it too well because you can just use it, but it would be good to understand this eventually. If you go through it, you should be able to understand it. And then at the end, we will just play the animation track. And 
Here we will use debris to add the item, the animation strike, uh, so we can destroy it properly. And it will be equal to the track stall, track stall length, which is how long the animation is, plus one. So whenever the animation ends, it will add another second and then it will destroy the animation. That's it for this function. And this is actually the longest function, I believe, out of all of these. So now these are the simpler ones. So we can get this one. And this one is a very simple one, which just returns all the animations that are currently playing or that are in the table. So uh, if not, module the animations character. So if you're not in there, then, you know, return an empty table. There's no animations in there. So if the animation type, so if you want a specific animation, then you can put that in here and it will return that animation. Uh, if, it, if you don't have the animation, it will return an empty table. And if you don't put a specific animation in here, then it will return every single animation that is inside of the table. Next function is animation. So this is to check if an animation is actually playing. So for the character, for the type of the animation and the animations ID. So here we will get the animation. So it's, it's quite a long line of stuff, but it's basically looking inside of the table for the character and then the type of the animation and then the animations ID itself. And it will just return that and some other stuff here you can read through it i'm trying to make this video too long next function is to remove an animation so yeah this one's also quite long but don't worry because these other ones are not very long and they are very simple so this is the animation data so similar to what you have in here i think it's actually almost the exact same thing or just is the exact same thing yeah it is so this is just all the data for the animation that you are looking for. If it's there, then animation data's track. If that's also there, then it will stop the track and it will destroy the track. So this is if you want to stop an animation fully or remove the animation, you know, it does both. Next, we do a check if the animation data has a connection. So this is for the, uh, the table that we have inside of here, or wherever it is, this, this table. Uh, if that's there, then for every animation in there, it will stop it. So this is if you want to stop multiple, because there's a for loop here, which will loop through everything in there. And if can't, so this is basically the connection itself. So each specific one, then it will disconnect each one. Here we just set the animation that we're looking for to nil in the side of the table. And here are just some other checks to see if there's anything else you need to set to nil. Next function is the uh, stop animation this one is a lot simpler so it just checks inside of the table if the character's there if it is wonderful and if the type is equal to all so you want to remove or, or stop every single animation then it will loop inside of the table and it will just fire remove animation and here is if you want to remove every single one yeah this other one is if you want to remove every single one it's basically the same thing as this one up here it just does a loop and it also has a check if there's an animation ID here. If there is, then it will remove that specific one. If not, then it will remove every single one. So it's just another edge case scenario in case you don't put all, but you don't put in a specific animation ID. And the final one is very simple. It's just to clear the table when a player leaves. So there's no issues with data management. So players dot player removing. That's why we needed the player service. And we get the character and inside of the module it finds the character. Inside of the table module the animates atoms, it finds the character and then it will fire this. So it will empty the table and it will stop the animations uh, with this function. So it stops every single one and it closes the table. So that is basically it. Okay, so if you want to actually use it, this is what you have to do. So at the top, we will get the player and the character. Then we will get the two services, the replicator storage and the user input service, just so you could test it out. And this is how you require a module, which is how you actually use it. So you do the module uh, as a variable and it will be able to require then where the module actually is, which in this case is replicate storage dot animation handler. And now if you want, you can just call any of the functions inside of the so module dot load anim is anim. You can do all of these now from any script. So now we just do a user input service to actually test it out. So game process event is 
basically to check if you're typing. If you are, then return end. It won't fire the key. Uh, like if you, if you press E, uh, but you're typing, it won't fire. So then we just do a check to see what the key is. You can change this key to whatever you want and so on. You can make this mouse and whatnot, but this is just to test it out. And here is how you actually do it. So you do load animation for the character and you can just give it a name for what you want the animation to be. So you can reference it back inside of this table and you can find it. So in this case, hand up because that's what the animation is. And here you put RBX asset ID. Uh, as I mentioned, you don't have to have this if you throw in this line of code. So I'll just leave it like this, which is the animation ID that I had from uh, when I made the animation. So now if I press play and I press the E key, it put me back to R16, or R15, so give me a second. There we go. Now if I press the E key, my hand raises. And I can spam it and it overlaps, but this is why you have the is animation. So you would just do a check for uh, is animation. So if module dot is anim, and then what are the parameters for this? So let's have a look. Is animation character type, and then the animation ID. You would just put in the character and up. And then you want this. And in this case, you do want RBX asset ID to quickly test it out. Then return end. So it won't fire again if the animation is already playing. See, I'm spamming it now and it's only playing again after the animation is finished. If I take this out, you'll be able to see that it does. Oh, put me back to R15. Yeah, that's quite annoying. There we go. You can see that it overlaps. That's why it's kind of moving. Very weird. So yeah, there's a, little, uh, a small showcase.